Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. Yes, another second channel video. They're easy for me to make because I don't edit as much and it's kind of like a one take wonder. So I wanted to talk about Bitcoin mining on the Commodore 64 today. Robin at 8-Bit Show and Tell recently put out a video about it and he showed how fast you can actually mine on the 64 when you use a super CPU. It was a product made by CMD, an accelerator that goes in this thing. Very rare, very expensive if you try to buy one today. And it speeds up the 64 dramatically. If you check out his video, he was able to get the hash rate down to one hash every 0.1 seconds. So roughly, was that 10 hashes per second? Which of course is incredibly slow. But compared to the stock speed on the 64, which is about one hash every three and a half seconds, that's a massive, that's a, that's a massive improvement in speed with a super CPU. There's a GitHub page, which I have up on the screen here. You can't see it, but I'll put a screenshot and I'll put a link to it where you can download this program so you can try it out for yourself. But what I wanted to do today was show how fast I can do mining on the 64 using this, which is the Turbo Chameleon 64. I haven't actually shown this cartridge on the channel yet. This was a donation, so there will be an associated mail call video coming up. But this is an interesting cartridge. It goes in the 64. It offers all sorts of crazy features. There's VGA, there's PS2 ports, there's an SD card slot, there's even an IR slot or an IR port here for a wireless gamepad. Uh, and then there's an ethernet jack, which I don't have the card installed, but I have it. And this is all a cartridge that plugs into the 64 and extends this, the capabilities of the machine dramatically. Now there's a lot of trickery going on with the Chameleon 64 because this has an FPGA inside of it and it's essentially recreating the Commodore 64 inside this cartridge. Yes, an entire 64 is in here. It's a, a core that is that runs on the FPGA, but when you plug it into the 64, which you see here on the screen, this is just the stock 64, what this does is the FPGA core that's in here basically uses the 64 for I.O. For the screen, for the joystick ports, for the sound, for the video, all that stuff. So I'm going to pop this in and I'll show you a little bit about what this looks like. I'll have a more in-depth video on it uh, on my other channel. You see it turns on, it takes over, and that's the Turbo Chameleon booting up. And here it is at the main menu. All right, I've gone to manual focus. Okay, so if I go to file browser and I go under apps, here is the miner program. So this actually emulates a disk drive and it does that in a way where fast loaders absolutely work as well. Uh, there is a way to actually download actual hash data so you can actually mine for real coin. But I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna do the demo mode. And this will run for a second and there it is, there's the hash rate, 3.5 seconds per hash. And uh, Robin mentioned in his video that typical fast miner machines using GPUs and stuff is in the giga hashes per second. So it shows you how slow this thing is. The reason why I wanted to kind of look at this is not just to see the stock speed, but it's because the Turbo Chameleon, if I push the button on the cartridge here, it takes us back to the menu. This actually has some turbo modes. And we can go into turbo menu here and there are various speeds we can pick from here. So turbo mode's currently off. I have it set for two megahertz. That's the way it's saved on this configuration. I like two megahertz because it's a slight speed bump from the stock machine. It's almost like a Commodore 128. And some PAL games work properly on NTSC machines with the two megahertz bump. And there's no other issues with the game. The game still works perfectly, but any slowdown that might happen is gone. And this DO30 bit is basically, I think, allowing any game that tries to turn the 128 into fast mode, it'll honor that and actually enable the turbo mode. Now, you can turn turbo on in the menu here, on and off, but I have a button mapped on the cartridge itself, so I can push that and engage turbo at any time. So well, I'll just give an example of that. So we'll leave this set for two megahertz, but the turbo will be off. And let's go back to the miner. We'll exit this, I'm sorry, we'll enter this, hit D for demo. Uh, okay, pushing the wrong button there, it's pushing S. All right, so it's calculating the hashes. There it is, three and a half seconds. If I push the button on the cartridge, there we go, it should speed up. And look at that, 1.6 now. 
So that's about twice as fast now. And um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. And that's just at the two megahertz setting. So let's go back into turbo options. So there are various choices here. We have two, three, four, five, and six. And then we have 75%, which is actually slower than stock. You can slow your 64 down 50% and 25%. And there's also a no limit setting. So let's just try just for fun. Let's try this 25% one. And we will go to file browser and we will load the miner again. And let's see how slow, come on, D for demo. There it is. So <laughs> this should take, wait. Oh, I didn't push the button. Okay, so it's running at stock speed. I'm gonna push the button. And now this should run at 25% of normal speed. So that should what, to be like 10 seconds or something like that. <laughs> Let's see, what is it? 9.6. Let's see, let it run one more hash. It might slow down even further because I might have changed the speed in the middle of a hash. I'm not sure why you'd want to slow your machine down. Maybe for debugging. Ah, oh, there we go. 13, 13 seconds. Maybe for debugging purposes, if you're writing a program and you want to see frame by frame accuracy on the machine, on the 64. I mean, you could probably do this with Vice and obviously most development is probably going to go on with Vice or something like that. If I push the button again, it will return the machine back to stock speed. Should speed back up to three and a half seconds. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's go back in here. I want to let's take a look at what turbo is at six megahertz. So turbo mode. So keep in mind, the super CPU runs at 20 megahertz when it's in fast speed. And it has cache memory built in as well, which should speed things up even more like it's kind of got a kind of like a modern CPU has cache level one cache, that kind of thing. Super CPU has that as well. But the super CPU has to live within the constraints of the 64, where it's just a CPU, it has its own RAM, but it does need to talk to the RAM on the motherboard and the VIC and all that stuff. This thing doesn't necessarily need to do that. All the RAM in this cartridge is actually inside the, the cartridge itself. And it really is only mirroring the output to the VIC chip. There's obviously a slowdown that has to happen while that's going on. Can't run at full speed there. But I think it's not doing as much mirroring as the super CPU is stock. So if I run the miner here and I turn it on to six megahertz, so we're gonna go to demo. Keep in mind, I'm running at stock speed right now. So this will be three and a half seconds here and I'll push the button. Okay, so the button is pushed. So now we're getting 0.5 seconds per hash and that's at the six megahertz settings. That's not half bad. Super CPU has optimizations you can run. So if you're, say, only using text mode, you're not using graphics mode, it won't mirror as much of the memory from the Super CPU into the 64, and it actually speeds up dramatically. And at first, he ran it just with the stock settings, and he was getting a slower hash rate. So with the stock configuration, the Super CPU running without any optimizations was getting, uh, Robin was getting 0.3 seconds per hash. And then he ran optimizations and he got it to run at 0.1 seconds per hash with a total elapsed time for this demo hash or demo block to be two minutes and 35 seconds, if I recall. So let's exit out of this and go back to turbo and we'll set this to no limit. And let's see how fast the turbo chameleon is. We'll just turn on the turbo mode entirely so we don't have to push the button. Let's see how fast the turbo chameleon is compared to the super CPU. I think this is a pretty good test actually. So. File browser, miner, there it is. And we're gonna hit demo, there it goes. All right, so Robin got a consistent 0.1 and here we're getting a 0.2. So this is a little bit slower at no limit than a fully optimized super CPU. But, oh look, it actually jumped down to 0.1 a little bit. But the difference is here is that this device doesn't necessarily have to slow down. Basically, there's no optimizations to do here. That speed, the optimized speed that Robin was using on his video only works in text mode, while this would give this kind of speed even in graphics mode. So Robin let this run through an entire block and it has a total elapsed time. I'm gonna use my phone here and I'm gonna figure out the elapsed time on this thing so we can compare a little more directly than this rounded off time here. Okay, here we go, start. And let's see how long this takes.
All right, well, um, I wonder if this runs the same amount of time every time. Because Robin got two minutes and 34 seconds, if I recall. Uh, one minute, 23 seconds. Is this the same if I run it again? I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna run this test again and just confirm that it's roughly the same amount of time. It finished and I think it stopped on the same nonce as well. So I assume that was the same amount of time as the first time that I ran it. So there we have it. The Turbo Chameleon 64 is better for Bitcoin mining than the Super CPU. Oh, wait a second. I'm hearing something in my earpiece. I'm not really wearing one. Plot twist, it's actually not faster. Turns out that when Robin was running his tests, I noticed a little weird discrepancy with the nonce, and that's the number that's applied to the hash. It seems that the Bitcoin mining program, it doesn't initialize that value to zero, and it was relying on the fact that it probably on Vice, it initializes the RAM in the virtual 64 to all zeros, and so does this device. So the nonce, when you watch my footage, always starts at zero. But on Robin's video, it seemed to start at different values. Whenever he had the Super CPU installed, it started at all A's. And sure enough, that affected the total elapsed time for the entire demo block. So when he got two minutes and 34 seconds, when he went back and fixed the code and initialized that memory location at all zeros, so it would match what I got with this device, he actually got one minute and 11 seconds. So beating this by 10 seconds for the demo block. So the reality is Super CPU is faster, at least for Bitcoin mining on the 64, than the Turbo Chameleon 64, although only by 10 seconds. So it's not a dramatic win, but it's a win nonetheless. Of course, this is something you can easily buy right now. Getting a Super CPU, not so easy. They're on eBay, prices are astronomical. This is definitely a cheaper option. So if you want a Bitcoin mine on your 64 and you want some more speed, Super CPU is the way to go. What can I say? So that's gonna be it for this video. This is my second channel and it's just starting out. So please subscribe, it really will help me out. If you like this video, a thumbs up will also help. Check out my main channel if you haven't already and you're not already subscribed to that. You can support me on Patreon. There's links in the video. Please check out Robin's video that he has a lot more on Bitcoin mining, including connecting it and getting stuff from the blockchain as well. So it's not just a demo block. It's a very cool video. So yeah, please check that out. His channel is awesome. I can't say enough about Apich Hotel. I love it. And that is it. Stay healthy, stay safe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.